Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, holy and living one. You have come to your people and set them free. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. <clears throat> you have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually. 
and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm this evening is 96. I will begin and you will respond with the last part of the verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Declare his glory among the nations. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. Oh, the majesty and magnificent magnificence of his presence. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come to his Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the Lord before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the people with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder in all that is in it. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes. He will judge the world with righteousness. A reading from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify himself a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
the Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and earth, peace among those who he favors. When the angels had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Speak to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We cannot approach the manger of the Christ child in the same way that we approach the cradle of a regular child. Rather, when we go to his manger, something happens and we cannot leave it the same again here we must collapse or know the mercy of god directed towards us what does this mean it is god himself the lord and creator of all things who is so small here who is hidden here in the corner and who enters the plainness of the world who meets us in the helplessness and defenselessness of a child and wants to be with us. And he does this not out of placefulness or out of sport, but in order to show us where he is, to show us who he is, to show us that the throne of God and the world is not on the human thrones, but in the human depths right here in the manger. Words of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, God is in the manger. In reflecting on those words about God from Dietrich Bonhoeffer, our God, and the same God who enters this world in the first place that God is laid is a manger, I can't help but think that it is hard for us to imagine to the fullest possibility what that would really look like or feel like for Mary and Joseph. That is, to have their newborn baby be born and immediately laid into a place that was meant for animals to feed from. I believe it would be hard for us to imagine, not only because we have created a narrative of the Christmas story that is sweet and charming, and there's nothing wrong with that, but also because our modern perspective on bringing a child into this world takes away the shock value that I think this nativity story should really give to us. At Christmas time, I often think about my own experience as a father in the days when my wife April was pregnant with our twins and how frightening it was for us as a couple. All of the doctor's appointments, 
all of the checkups, all of the sonograms, all of the emergency room visits, all of the things we had to do, even on Christmas Eve, we had to do them, and that fear carried through all the way to the days, the, uh, the day the boys were born, and then the days after as they laid their own little heads down in the NICU. With each stage of the pregnancy and the moments uh, thereafter, the anxiety just kept building on top of each other. The fear that something might go wrong or that some piece of bad news might befall us was always there. I think I held my breath more and more with each visit that we had to the doctor. And yet, even in all of that fearfulness, there was that safety net, knowing that modern medicine that science was there, that something, if it should be wrong, the doctors, science, technology, they were there to maybe make things better if they possibly could. Most of us sitting in here tonight don't know a time in our lives without modern medicine positively impacting us in some way. But Mary, Joseph, the baby Jesus himself, they didn't have any of that. All they had was the manger. The day our boys were healthy enough to come home, the NICU nurses literally unplugged them and handed them to us. All of the wires and the sensors that connected them to those fancy monitors and computers that would alert the entire NICU in a second if anything was wrong, it was gone in an instant. All we were left with was, congratulations, you can go home with your children now. The only piece of parenting that we had to prove before we could leave that day was that we had to show the nurses that we knew how to buckle the boys into their spaceship-sized car seats that were big enough to fit on the, the SpaceX rockets, which in and of itself is ironic and should be another piece that shocks us about this nativity story that we're hearing tonight. After we passed our so-called test, and as I was driving home in the snow, thinking about the brand new father that I was and having to care for two new little lives, I thought to myself, how is this even legal? How am I allowed to be taking these two little boys home? How am I going to know if they're breathing right? How am I going to know if their hearts are still going? How am I going to know if their oxygen levels are perfect? Why was there no transition period? <laughs> Maybe we could have gone from all of the wires to just the more quiet room in the hospital for a night or two where we had the nurses and the staff there just in case something went wrong. This is craziness, I thought to myself. I see your heads nodding. We've all been there before, whether it's raising our children or grandchildren or helping out with a brother or sister or niece or nephew, we know that feeling. And yet, and yet we're all here this evening listening to this story that is so dear to our hearts. The story of the baby being born into this world and laid directly into the place where cows and pigs were feeding likely hours, if not moments, before Jesus was placed there. There are no wires, no health monitors, no computers, no spaceship-sized car seats to be found. And Mary, Mary gazes into her child's eyes and treasures and ponders all of these things in her heart. How beautiful is that? Makes me sound like a crazy person. I have to believe Mary did just that because somehow, some way, she knows that the little one lying there doesn't just represent the goodness and loving kindness of God, but is, but is the goodness and loving kindness of God. And because of this, I have to believe that Mary knew in her heart of hearts that all will be well. Finally, all will be well with this world. She was absolutely right, my friend. All will be well. I know that it's hard for us to believe and sometimes hard for us to see, but just as it was with Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and all who gathered round to behold the mystery of God born into human flesh, all will be well for us right here, right now. And I know all will be well, not just because my faith tells me so, not just because it's written in the Bible, but because you Grace Church, 
community of honest human endeavor, unresolved human struggle, community of love, you show me all will be well. It's not all that often, if ever, for some clergy to have four registers of the church open on one's desk all at the same time. One for marriage, one for baptism, one for burials, and one for Sunday morning services. But I had the blessed opportunity to fill in the blanks on those pages of each of those books less than a week ago and all within a 24-hour period. And I had the opportunity to do that because of you, you who wished to be here and to be part of the continuation of this story that started on this night some 2,000 years ago. It's a special moment of my life that I will always treasure and ponder in my heart as I reflect on my ministry with all of you. Part of what makes it so special is that if you really stop to think about those services literally happening back to back to back to back, they helped us to celebrate the Christmas story to its fullest. The love of God that bonds tightly together a new couple in marriage is the same love that manifests itself tonight and is emptied in into the manger. The baptism of a child and the ministry that his baptism will call him to is the same ministry and baptism that Christ shares with us. What is more is the ministry of that baptism itself is foreshadowed by the good news of God coming to the shepherds in the fields coming to the lowly and the poor of the world, the very people whom Jesus will care for all the days of his life and calls us to care for right now. And the burial, more appropriately called a celebration of life, because that's what God gives to us through coming into this world tonight, life. And yet it will take his death on the cross to make life a possibility for all of us. But the moment of triumph will come again on Easter morning, and yet that moment can't happen without the manger. All of that, all of that was celebrated with this community and is represented right here, right now, with the coming of Jesus in our midst once again. But what makes this all the more special, my friend? It tells me that you're here this evening not just because you want to witness or be filled with or feel that magic that truly fills our hearts this time of year, but instead you are here because you believe deep down in your heart of hearts, just as Mary believed, that all will be well too. Because while Christmas magic is a thing that is beautiful and magnificent and something that we all need, it can only fill our hearts but for a few short days of year of the year, but the love of God and the hope of God, that can fill our hearts for a lifetime. For that, I say, Alleluia, Alleluia, and I say thank you for holding on to that hope. God is here, my friends, and always will be for the hopes and the fears of all the years past, present, and yet to come, they are met in thee, They are met in the manger of Christ tonight, for it is God himself, the Lord, the creator of all things, who is so small here, who is hidden here in the corner, who enters the plainness of the world, who meets us in the helplessness, the defenselessness of a child, and wants to be with us. And for that, my friends, we celebrate and we ponder And we treasure all of these things in our hearts that the God of this world, the God that cares for us as a parent cares for a child, that God comes to us and comes to us in nothing but a manger. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and all that they had heard and all that had been told to them. But Mary Mary pondered all of these words. She treasured them in her heart. Amen.
same thing. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. My sisters and brothers, in the peace of God, all the gifts that we shall give and receive in these days are but small tokens of the gift that shines forth in God's word made flesh this night. From grateful hearts, let us intercede for all who find themselves longing for this deepest, truest gift, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. That the peace proclaimed by angels in the shepherd's field might be realized on every field of war and on every street of violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the child born to us might find in our hearts warm welcome by our openness to the needs of the homeless and the hungry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in this time of gift giving, we might become more responsive to the abandoned, the despairing, and the mourning. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the rejoicing of this day might be a bond leading us to true communion of life and worship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the joy and consolation of the wonderful Counselor might enliven all who are struck down by disease and illness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the blessed hope we celebrate this night might be the fulfillment of all who have gone before us in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, you have pierced the quiet of this night by the utterance of your word in our flesh. May our words of praise and petition be strong echoes of your Christmas word, so that all might come to the peace you promise in Jesus, who is Lord and God this night and forever. Amen. Amen. My sisters, my brothers, my friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good evening and Merry Christmas, Grace Church. Merry Christmas. 
so wonderful to see all of your faces here worshiping with us on this beautiful night. A special welcome to any visitors that we might have among us. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being with us this evening. If you happen to be a visitor, um, I would invite you to find our vestry representative of the night, Miss Christine Mahan. Christine, can you raise your hand? Thank you. Um, and let her know who you are so we can know more about you and so we can help to serve you and your family and the needs of the community. But again, thank you for being here and thanks to all of you for being here and being the hope that truly is a representative of this, this night. Uh, there are no announcements because it is Christmas. Um, yeah, but remember we got church tomorrow and Sunday, three days in a row, so you can get your full uh, full church uh, uh, services in. So anyway, Merry Christmas, everyone. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man, of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, and your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord, of all presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now
Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, the holy thing for the holy ones. You may be seated. My friends, remember that we are able to share in both the bread and the wine. If you would prefer both bread and the wine, I am able to dip it for you. Just hold out both your hands and that will signal to me that that is what you want. If you would prefer just bread, please one arm over your chest. If you would prefer just a blessing, both arms across your chest. All are perfectly acceptable ways to receive the sacrament.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent His Son to take our nature upon Him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of His holiness. May God, who set His angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. May God, who in the Word made flesh, joined heaven to earth, and earth to heaven, give you His peace and favor, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always.
us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.